Let's open it up and see what's up. There we go. Ah, here it is. Binoculars. So I got these two binoculars here, both of them made by Virtual, and this model is the YC12, this model is the LG15. I would send these binoculars to do a review on them and to uh, kind of do an unboxing and a little bit of review. The LG15 is a higher end model, while the YC12 is the more budget friendly model. You can even see the box is a little bigger on the more expensive model. And over here you see, uh, this is the more budget friendly model. Brand is Virtual. And this one over here is $120, is the uh, higher performance model. This one is a 12 by 42, while this one is a 10 by 50. This is a collaboration video, so let's get started. So we're gonna go through both of them and give you the pros and cons of each one and why one binocular is better than the other and what makes it better and also maybe some tips on how to use binoculars uh, for those that don't know. So let's get right into it. So here we have the model YC12 virtual binocular. Uh, this is, I guess, a little more budget-friendly binocular. Um, and let's take a look at it and see the uh, details and unbox it a little bit. Okay, and in the box we have, oh, pulling it all out. There we go. That's all we got. This is empty. So we got two, three pieces over here. Okay, I'm guessing these are the instructions. This is the actual binocular and this might be some accessories. Let's take a look. So inside this black bag is a little bit of an instruction booklet and uh, explanation of how to use these binoculars. Okay, and next we will actually be opening this bag. Okay, here are the actual binoculars. And as you can see, they are wrapped nicely in a plastic and they come with two different accessories over here. Let's take the other accessories out as well. So that way we can see everything. Okay, here we go. So let's first talk about this case. Um, this is quite a simple case, but very elegant. Um, what you got over here is uh, a strap that holds on both sides. Um, I believe that if you want, in a Velcro, uh, hold it down here and simple open and close. Nothing too fancy. If you don't want the strap to get in the way, which I find can be annoying sometimes, what you can do is put it in like that. And I found that if you put the binoculars right over it, it actually does not um, mess up the and you can just slow close it up. So that's kind of nice. And over here you have a little cleaning cloth. This is probably micro, yep. It's a lint-free cleaning cloth, uh, microfiber. So that's nice to have in order to clean the lenses. You always want to keep the lenses clean. And uh, let's talk about these two other accessories after we open up the binocular over here. Okay, so first of all, we have a nice rubber cover over here. If you want to uh, make sure that it's always kept clean, you can always take off this rubber case. And on the other ends, there is a rubber covering as well. If you want to pull these off, you can pull it completely off. Um, and if you're keeping it in the case and the case is clean, you may want to do that to uh, just be able to use it quicker. Um, however, it is nice to have if you don't want it getting dirty. Okay, so let's talk about this over here. Because I think I know what this is. So this is meant as a shoulder strap or if you want to put it over your neck and uh, I will show you how to install it on your binocular. So putting these buckles on in order to have your neck strap attached is pretty simple. First, the only thing you got to do is take this part out and same on the other side. Just take this little thing out, thread it through right here and the other side as well. There we go. Once you have those two through, then you could pull this up a little bit, as you can see right here, and pass this through. It might take a second. Once you get it in there, you could just slide it right in and into the other side as well. And this is also a good time to check um, how big you would like it to be. So you can adjust it through here very easily and on this side as well. I'm going to adjust it to the way I like it. And uh, there you go. It's now has a nice neck strap. And that was pretty simple. These rubbers are good to have, but for this demonstration, I'm gonna take them off. And I'm gonna show you the last piece over here. And what this is, is actually a phone adapter. 
And you might be asking, why do I need a phone adapter? Well, if you want to capture an actual image of something through the binoculars, you can with this. Okay, putting the binoculars like this to give you a better idea of how you set this up. However, um, I will be using a Motorola phone that I have here. I'm going to show you how to mount a phone inside of this phone mount. So, you just got that right there. And there we go. It's loaded in. Now you want to turn it around, and obviously you could adjust using this lever over here. However, um, my phone is actually set perfectly, so I have to set it back. And you want the lens to be right in the middle over there. And once it's set, like, tighten it up. There we go. And now you can put it on the actual binocular. Now you can choose whichever side you want. Okay. However, obviously, you're not going to be seeing much through the phone right now because it's black. I will try to capture images another time. Um, however, for now, uh, this is how you use it, and you should be able to see out of it through your phone. This is a great way of actually capturing images of things far away. Of course, you can put it onto either lens, but um, I don't think it makes a huge difference. As you can see, the size over here is 42.7, which is the size of the binocular. There is also a little, uh, I guess, threading for a stand, and it can be used with a stand such as this one. And uh, I guess the drawbacks with this one is that it's not nitrogen filled and it is waterproof but doesn't have a rating, an IPX rating. So, uh, but for all intents and purposes, it is a pretty good one. I did go outside and give it a little test. Um, it definitely does work. I'm going to try to get a better uh, video at some point out. But for now, um, you'll just have to go with my, my word on it that uh, it was able to get some pretty good shots and it works as, uh, as described. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of measurement between the eyes. Um, I'm going to measure from end to end. It's three and a half inches when it's closed. And from the middle of the lens to the other middle of the lens, it's about two and a half inches, two and a quarter inches when it's fully closed. It does open up to a full length. And I'm going to measure that as well. And you get four and a half inches from end to end. And from the middle to the middle, it gets three inches. So that's if you want to check if it does fit to your eyes, it should. I mean, it is adjustable. And now I'm going to go a little bit deeper just to explain different um, different uses and how to use a binocular. Um, so for anyone who is familiar with binoculars, this might not be worth your time, but uh, I will go in depth trying to explain the different aspects of a binocular and how to use it. First of all, it's always good to show the warnings. Do not actually look into the sun and the other good tips it gives you. This is a 10 by 50 binocular, which means the 10 is in reference to the magnification uh, through, the, through the lens when you're looking at an object. It will be 10 times uh, magnified. And the second number is the diameter of millimeters of the objective lens. So we're talking about these lens back here. That's how big the, um, these lenses are. And the difference that that makes is that it will let you know the, uh, the different brightness that you'll get and the detail you'll get um, depending on uh, what you want to look at. The magnification should be different. Uh, so bird viewing, uh, animal, um, looking at animals and birds, it might be different depending on what you're looking for. So definitely take a look into that and see if that's the magnification that you want. So the first thing you want to do when you're using a binocular is first of all, if you look on the other side, you'll see there's a little indication here. It means you could turn it either way. This is basically, if you were wearing glasses, you probably want it to be like this, in this position. If you're not wearing glasses, you could use it like this, so that way you'll get a better picture. And the next very obvious thing is there's a hinge here, as you can see, and it's a very stiff hinge for the reason that you want it to be in the same position when you're using it. And when you want to put it away, you want to put it away, you can close it, but you don't want it to start opening and closing on you. So I do like the stiff hinge. And as you can see right here, it'll be pretty easy to figure out um, what size you are. You just want to make sure that the two images that you're seeing are turned into one image when you are looking through it. Now, if you do have a tripod, like I was showing you earlier, there's a screw in here, a little secret screw right here. I don't know if you can see. I pulled mine out and you can connect the tripod to it. Obviously, um, it's not as easy as it looks to connect this tripod, but it can be done. The important thing is to buy an adapter if you would like to use the tripod. Um, obviously, this won't work. However, um, an adapter would work. But let me put the screw right back in. And actually, you could just put that right back in. It does say virtual on the top. And now let's talk about focus. Every time you want to look at a new object, you can use this focus wheel to focus and put in a clearer picture um, what the uh, bird or animal that you want to see or just you know object um, and turning it one way it will it'll bring the lens up and down and that creates a 
uh, I guess, focus for you, uh, depending if the uh, object is closer or farther away from where you are. As you can see here is the objective barrels, and here are the objective rings, and those are the magnifiers. These are called ocular lenses, and these lenses are where your eyes will be, and they do have to be focused. And as you notice, there is one more little adjustment ring here, and that is called the diopter ring. And this diopter ring only needs to be set one time, for, and it's specific for your eyes. So when you set it, you should be good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these counterclockwise, both of them, okay, until they're fully counterclockwise. Okay, what you got to do is you got to take your binoculars, look through only the left side for just a minute until you're able to focus on an object. Once that becomes the most focused it can be with this adjustment ring, then close this eye and use this eye and adjust it again. Clear once again using this ring over here, adjust it again. So you want to cover this side the second time around. And once you do that, it will be focused and you will be able to uh, use your binoculars. They'll be the best focus for your eyes. So here we have it, the full set over here. Um, I definitely think that for um, the price, the value is very good and you can see it very well. Hopefully we can do a follow-up video with, uh, with maybe some scenery or something like that, um, I hope. So if you check back maybe in a month or two and I can do a follow-up video. So if you are interested in a follow-up video, please leave a comment. Otherwise, definitely think this is a worthy buy um, for the price and uh, I would recommend it. And here we have the virtual binoculars. This is the model LG15 and it is a little bit of a, I guess a higher end model of binoculars made by virtual and let's take a look at it. Okay, and we get a uh, microfiber cleaning cloth. That's really nice. And over here we get a, uh, this is actually a phone mount adapter. And over here, this is a strap for, um, for the neck or shoulder for the binoculars. And over here is the actual binocular. From the back you see that there's a little bit of a belt loop over here. So you can put that on your belt if you want. And this is reinforced stitching for the case over here um, and I like this case it looks very nice it kind of has like a little bit of a I guess leather feel to it in the front over here and the rest is made out of cloth really nice for traveling okay let's open it up and we got the binoculars they packaged it really well they put some uh, bubble wrap over here I'm sure my kids will love that and let's take it out and another wrapping okay and let's take it out of there and here we have the actual uh, binoculars these are quite heftier you feel the you know the quality in them just by uh, the weight here is the phone adapter I was talking about and uh, it just goes all around here so you could set it exactly the way you like it and uh, let's see I have a phone right here let's plug it right in and there we go you see it goes right in there now you want to make sure that this is on the camera and you can even adjust it a little bit and then you hold it down and you can tighten it and now you got the camera here, you can see right through, so there it is. And uh, we can actually attach it to the end of this binocular. And you can just put it right on there, and you know, the binoculars obviously we, we're not outside right now, but maybe I'll do a test one day and you'll be able to see the, the uh, pros of having something like this and the uh, advantages are that you can actually um, take a picture of your, uh, of the thing that you're seeing really far away. So kind of a way to capture, which is really nice. Um, that way you can actually take pictures and videos and you can choose either lens. I'm not sure if it makes a difference. Um, and now let's talk about the actual binocular. But first I would uh, be remiss if I didn't mention the uh, strap that it comes with. So let's open the shoulder strap or neck strap, or whatever you want to call it, necklace strap. And it's pretty thick over here. Um, and it has a nice kind of, uh, if this is going over your shoulder or belt, as you can see it's like uh, laced with some kind of material over here. So that's nice, and uh, I'll show you how to put it in. First you have to take this piece out over here. There we go. And once you take that out, you can lace it in. Now I'm not sure, um, the advantage of putting it through here is that to make sure that it actually, uh, this cover doesn't get lost. However, um, it would be advantageous to for sure uh, put it through here. And once you put it through there, you can actually just put it right back in this loop right here, which I have to hold that tight, 
and then push this in, give it some space to go, and you can get it right in there. And the good news is you only have to do this once, unless you're taking it off every five minutes, I'm not sure why you do that, but there we go. And now one, set, one side is set, now let's do the other side. And like I said, just take the first one out and strap it inside of there, uh, of the hole inside of the binocular, and then you can put it through like this. I'm sure you've used these types of loops before, and you can adjust how large you want it through these different adjustable loops over here. And now you could just put it around your neck, which is really nice. Uh, just make sure you don't you get it the right way, so that way it doesn't tangle up. Okay, now let's talk about the actual binocular, which is what we're all here to see. So um, let's just talk about the basic functions. First of all, this is a 12 by 42 binocular, which means that it is mag magnifying at 12 times, and it is 42 inches in diameter at the end over here. So that is ideal for bird watching, I think. I believe there are different numbers depending on the different types of activities you want to do with the binoculars. Uh, the numbers should be different. However, um, there are, I guess, generalizations, but uh, this definitely is one of the higher end ones at 12 by 42 because 12 is a very, uh, 12 magnifying at 12 times is very good. What's nice about these binoculars are actually that they are nitrogen filled, which gives it a much clearer and crisper picture, and as well as just being higher quality image. Um, it works better, it should last longer. What's also nice about these binoculars are that they're actually completely waterproof. It's IPX7 rated, which I believe is one of the highest ratings you can get. Um, it is completely waterproof, which is very nice, and it also is fog proof. So you don't have to worry about these fogging up if it gets cold or too hot or whatever it is. In different temperatures, it will work just fine. As far as other features go, it does have a little dial heel, but this dial is actually just a cap and cover. And what this covers is this little hole over here, which is actually a mounting hole. That mounting hole is meant for something like this, some kind of tripod. However, you would need an adapter to use it because um, obviously, as you can see, this fitting into there is not ideal. So I'll just screw that right back in. It has a little virtual logo over here. The whole body is made out of um, definitely material that makes it easy to grip and uh, nice to feel. So there's that. Um, that's a very nice texture. And there are rubber covers in both front and back. So the front ones right here, you see they do have a spot for the loop. Um, this is disconnectable, so that way, if you wanted, you could just have it hanging from the loop, this loop right here, and then that way you wouldn't lose this, and it will be easily accessible. If uh, it's annoying you and getting in the way, that could be very useful. It also do does have two covers over here, which you can actually pull out, which is very nice. As you can see right here, there's a little um, hole for it to go back into. Obviously, it's not the easiest thing to take it in and out, but it shouldn't be something that you're doing on a regular basis anyway. Uh, but I did get it in pretty easily, so that's nice. Um, and once you get it in nicely, it should stay. And uh, as you can see, the model right here, LG15. And on the bottom here, you do have different information and uh, plus and minus for the diopter ring, which we will get to shortly. Okay, so as of now, I just did a basic... Uh, overview of the binoculars. Um, I will measure the diameter of these binoculars, uh, not the diameter, the uh, the space in between the two eyes so that way you can know if it's good for you. At the smallest size it's three and three quarters and from the middle to the middle it is around two and a half, a little more than two and a half and if you open it, and that's the smallest size possible, if you open it to the largest size from end to end it is four and a half inches and from the middle to the middle, it is three inches. So uh, that's good to know um, if it's something that would make a difference to you. Uh, and I'm gonna go through the different features that it has uh, as far as regular binoculars and how to use binoculars. Obviously the first thing that you wanna do is if you're wearing glasses, then you wanna keep these in this position. But if you're not wearing glasses or wearing contacts, uh, then you can open these up and it gives it a little bit of a extra space so that way um, you can see a little bit better and that's the first thing that you want to do and the second thing you'd want to do is obviously just adjust this until uh, the two different things that you're seeing with your eyes kind of turn into one image so you know just make sure you are having in the right position um, and then after that you want to um, set uh, depending on what you're viewing how far it is um, you find the object and adjust this 
knob over here, which is to focus it. And I just noticed on this knob it says waterproof. So you'll use this focus reel to be able to focus on a different object. And once you get to a different object, you can use the focus reel to refocus it. However, when you are focusing um, your uh, binoculars for the first time, you'll want to turn it all the way uh, and this wheel as well, um, counterclockwise. And just with, uh, with this side, you'd want to close this one off and it'll be pretty easy. Just keep this shut and view something far away. Um, and when you see it clear with this eye, then you can go ahead and make sure it's as clear as you can get with the focus wheel. And then you would want to go ahead and use this eye and see, um, see if it's still clear for you and just refocus this again. And that will be using the diopter wheel, uh, diopter ring wheel will be focusing it for your eye and you only have to do this one time so that's nice once you have it set and focused for this one over here then you can go ahead and use your binoculars so that's a really nice uh, thing to have other than that um, it's a pretty standard pair of binoculars uh, all the features are great um, and I think for the price they definitely you get your value out of it I can do a follow-up video uh, showing you um, the different views that I can get using my phone and the adapter that goes over here. Please let me know in the comments if you do want to see that and I will try to make it happen. So if we wanted to compare these two binoculars, um, obviously there are pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages to each pair of binoculars. Um, the first thing I would say is the advantage of this binocular and the advantages and pros of this binocular are the price. The price is much better on this one. It is, I think, almost half the price of this one, so that can be a really nice thing. Um, obviously, the, uh, the it doesn't have the features, and it does not have the different um, advantages that this one has. Uh, but another advantage of this one that people may not recognize is the fact that it is a little bit smaller, um, which can actually be something that some people would find uh, incredibly valuable. Um, other than that, most of the things, most of the features are... Uh, better on this one. Um, some of the things are the same. For example, the cover is actually exactly the same for both of them. And um, I believe the strap is the same for both of them. Some smaller things to mention are that the, uh, the cleaning kit that comes with it is a little bit bigger on this one. And this phone adapter is a little bit higher quality on this one than uh, on, the, um, on the black one than on the green one. So it does have a little bit of an advantage there just by parts. The case of the black one has more reinforcement over here and also looks a little bit nicer in the front. As you can see, it just looks a little bit nicer. Um, it also has a belt loop in the back and the green one does not have a belt loop in the back. This does feel also a little bit higher quality while this one feels a little bit lower quality. This one has a lot of grips on it. I like the wheel a little bit better and this one has uh, no real grips on it except for this, so that might be something that might be looking into, worth looking into. The cover on this one is not as smooth and nice as the cover on this one. Um, this one is fully waterproof IPX7, while this one is just waterproof in the sense that um, it doesn't have any rating, however it, it should be waterproof. Um, also this one is not actually uh, filled with nitrogen while this one is filled with nitrogen this is fog proof and waterproof this one is actually not fog proof so um i guess the basic difference is also this one does have a different rating of a 12 by 42 while this one has a rating of 10 by 50. 12 by 42 it definitely being a higher quality image and the crispr image as well as the nitrogen does help out with that um otherwise uh, i guess they're pretty much um the same as far as build goes um I do feel that this one is a little bit lighter than this one, um, and that could be because of the higher magnification uh, that it does have the rating for. So um, all in all, I definitely give this one more advantages uh, as, far as, as far as features and richness goes. However, as far as being rich goes, if you are not, you might want to consider this one uh, just because of the lower price point. It uh, really depends what you're looking to do and how much money you have to spend. Anyway, uh, there are coupon codes that I got from the manufacturer that I can share with you in the description. So please check the description to use the coupon codes. Um, and the coupon code is good until March 31st, 2023. So, and it's good for both of these products and you'll get 10% off by using my coupon code that will be in the description. I hope this helped you um, use your binoculars and make a decision about your binoculars. 
and I uh, hope this helped a lot and have a great day.